Assalamualaikum and a very good day to Madam Aida. My name is Nur Akma Ayuni and today, me and my group mate Alia and Aisha will be presenting our case study on gardenia. The first point for this presentation is company's background. Gardenia is a bread manufacturing company founded in 1978 by Horatio Seislockham, an American who was an employee of International Executive Service Corps and worked with bakeries based in the United States. It is a Singapore multinational bakery owned by QAF Limited, which is a Singapore-listed food group. It started out as a small bakery in Singapore, but due to a high demand from the consumers, Gardenia has spent its business to a higher level. After a few years of operating, it became a joint venture that also operates Gardenia Singapore, Philippines, and also Malaysia. Gardenia Bakery's KL Sendirian Berhad was established on 1986 in Shah Alam, Selangor. Back then, they are only capable of producing 1,200 loaf of bread per hour. However, Gardenia has evolved into an indisputed market leader with more than 2 million loaf of bread with 53 types other products were produced daily. This include a wide range of breads, buns, rolls, cakes, waffles, wraps, spreads and also yellow noodles. The company now employs 34 people and operates 24 hours every day to ensure that Malaysians will be able to enjoy their bread anytime and anywhere. Throughout its 44 years of operation, Gardenia has received numerous awards such as Malaysia PR Awards 2021 in Corporate Branding Category, Putra Brand Awards from 2010 to 2021, Malaysia's Top 10 Brands from 2009 to 2011, and Malaysia's Choice Award in 2008 by Super Brands Malaysia. In fact, Gardenia has become the country's top manufacturer and wholesale dealer of bread, cakes and pastry. They also is Southeast Asia's leading bread manufacturer. Moving on to the next point, which is issue faced by Gardenia. On July 2020, Gardenia was accused of favouring the employment of refugees above Malaysian citizens. This can be seen as Gardenia's Facebook page revealed innumerable comments by upset Malaysians asking why do they employ refugees instead of Malaysians. At that time, Malaysian citizen is battling with the increased amount of employment. So, a lot of people think that Gardenia should pay more attention to this citizen and give them a hand. In fact, internet users threatened Gardenia with a boycott if the company continued to hire Rohingya refugees. Due to this problem, Gardenia has released two statements in response to the citizen concern regarding their hiring process. In this statement, Gardenia mentioned that they are truly aware about many people struggling financially during pandemic. Because of that, Gardenia exposed that they have specially allocated 1 million ringgit to individuals categorized as B40 since the beginning of the movement control order. This aim to ease the burden of those who have lost their jobs because of the virus. As for the recruitment of Rohingya refugees as Gardenia employees, they explained that it is one of the incentives taken by the government's pilot career program for refugees that they have been actively participating in since 2017. The Malaysian Immigration Department and the United Nations High Commission for Refugees, UNHCR, jointly began the program in March 2017. It seeks to provide 300 refugees with agricultural and manufacturing jobs at participating business across the country, including Gardenia. Gardenia now employs 57 Rohingya refugees in its factories. However, the corporation stated that fresh hire from the initiative are no longer being accepted. In addition, Gardenia also mentioned that they actually has plenty of job vacancies that need to be filled and Malaysians are urged to send in their application. Citizens don't need to worry as they are still on the lookout for new employees with recruitment sessions taking place twice a week. As you already know about Gardenia's issue on the false allegation prioritizing immigrants to work with them more than Malaysians, the reason why Malaysians are upset with this is because this happened during the MCO movement, where people have hardships in their career-wise. From this, Gardenia have their own solutions in response to the problem, which is releasing two statements upon the issue addressing the case. 
Other efforts that Gardenia had made are allocating 1 million ringgit Malaysia to help B40 groups in the beginning of MCO, actively participating in government pilot career program for refugees since 2017, and had plenty of vacancy to urge Malaysian to apply. Although Gardenia handled this situation well, we have proposed other suggestions to make it better. The first proposed solution is releasing statements to more mass media. Gardenia should speak the truth about the false allegation as much as they could. It is important for the public to know, posting it in broadcast media by giving statement about the false allegation officially. Also spread the statement in printing media where people can read. This can help to reach all ages including the older generation that rarely use social media. Next, post the statements in social media. As the allegations start in Facebook, Gardenia need to spread as much as possible and using social media is the best way because news spread faster and wider. Next, we propose that Gardenia file a lawsuit to the person that started all of this. This means they need to include a third party view in this negotiation, especially an arbitrator according to the four roles of the third party. This way, Gardenia can take legal action towards the allegation and ensure something like this won't happen again in the future. In addition, the fact that Gardenia was accused to discriminate Malaysian citizens due to hiring Rohingya refugees. It was advisable for the company to file a lawsuit to the first person who spread the wrong information. It was quite a hassle that the management team didn't have any team to monitor the social media 24 hours every day. Therefore, by establishing a professional team that could monitor the social media platforms such as Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter would be a good idea. Gardenia should have autocratic leadership to their employees so that the management affairs would be handled effectively. The professional team in charge can set up a software that could detect any first malicious threats or rumors about Gardenia, which could appear immediately to solve the whole problem. For instance, when someone comments something bad or spreads rumors about Gardenia, the professional team of the company would be able to find who is the suspect. Gardenia must upgrade their website that was even better than before, with stronger security and accessible. This is due to the public can directly access to the website when a controversy about Gardenia occurs to avoid any misinformation that will lead to a bigger problem. In conclusion, rumors or threats about any company always exist from time to time, causing the consumers to lose their trust on the company and tarnishing the company's image. Consumers' loyalty and brand value can be increased if a company that is facing these issues reviews its prior services and management to find what is wrong and solve it. To improve their company's reputation, Gardenia's management should be enhanced. Although they have released two statements regarding the issue, they should approach the bigger platforms such as national television channels, radio and newspaper to reveal the truth and explain on what had actually happened. Besides that, Employing a professional team and installing software that can help to improve the management sector of the company by monitoring and keeping up with any types of issues that might occur. All in all, Gardenia is advised to take immediate actions regarding their company to avoid consumers' unsatisfaction and improve their brand's reputation. Overall, hiring a professional team, installing a software in the social media platforms and enhancing their management sector all contribute to the company's success and growth.